the culture war is reformulating around the new dynamics, the new power dynamics in the post-Trump part two world. Like after Dylan Mulvaney and Budweiser, you would have to think that that, that trope, the idea of woke advertising, might have expired, but it hasn't. And I suppose the people that make commercials for Jaguar may be many things, but is it possible that they are totally and completely out of touch? Or are they in politicizing their product in the way this advert appears to? Although, gosh, ought it be regarded as, a, as politicization to have people sort of all doled up in burlesque, carnivalesque garb? Odd, isn't it, that we live in a fully immersive political culture now? They must think that there's a market for it, is what I'm basically trying to say. They must think there's a market for it. How long have you lived there? I've, be, I've been in your country with Jimmy's in the Rumble chat on and off for a while. I think I've got, an, uh, as someone says, are you sick, Russell? AG, right, sick. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I've got some sort of chest infection. I don't think it's like a, a viral thing. I think it's, uh, Russell, you look super relaxed. I am relaxed. I am relaxed. I am relaxed. All right, let's have it. But let me just, let's look at this Jaguar advert. Obviously, it's something a lot of people are commentating on and talking about. And where, where is the culture war now? What's the point in a culture war? Let's have a look at this. It's already sort of quite trite. I recognise the palette and the imagery from like uh, Benetton commercials in the late 80s. Benetton, uh, Benetton, as you should say it, they for a while made their bones with controversial commercials. It's actually not innovative at all, is it? It's very retro. They're sort of like it's redolent with reference to Warhol and Jasper Johns. If you know a bit about American pop art, those things are sort of all present in the imagery, even when it comes to its commercial semiotic history. Uh, you can see Benetton and stuff like that. What if there isn't even a car in the commercial? No, that won't work. We're trying to sell cars. Any of you that know anything about Edward Bernays, nephew of Sigmund Freud, credited with the advent and invention of the very profession of PR, know this, that the function of commercials is not to simply inform you of the availability of a product. Hey, do you like Topo Chico? It's fizzy water. Mmm. Delicious. Do you like trail mix? Delicious trail mix. You, let's face it, you're just trying to get the chocolate bits and messing around with that cranberry bullshit while trying to get to the chocolate. How about Positive, a Rumble product, or 1775, Rumble coffee? Commercials used to be about letting you know that a product was available if you wanted it. Then they realized, specifically Edward Bernays realized, that using the psychological insights of Sigmund Freud, you could connect products to deep yearnings and fears within human beings and therefore bypass their reason, their rationale, and make them believe that a product could do something for them that it simply never can. A car can move you from A to B in various degrees of comfort, maybe with a cup holder. I drove a Tesla for the first time recently, and frankly, I mean, I found it quite difficult. It took a bit too much power. That's why I stay with Ram Longhorn. Oh, Ram Longhorn, I know what I'm doing in that baby. That big, mighty old truck, I feel like the fool guy cruising around on the freeways up and down America 1, or do you call it US 1? Up and down, cruising through Miami and that thing. Now, what is that Jaguar commercial telling you? It's sort of, the, those images are derived from pop art and haute couture, high fashion, and are referencing the culture. Little bit, 2001 Space Odyssey, you know, like the rocks and the sort of space scape. Bloody ridiculous, really. I mean, the truth is, a Jaguar is just a vehicle. 
It's just a vehicle. That's all it is. That's all it, any of these things are. Car commercials used to be about freedom, didn't they? People used to ridicule the fact that they were on open roads. Look, it's look at the open road. You're you're cruising along a mountain highway. You know, they would often so you'd see people maybe on the salt plains of Utah, or you'd see people on a sort of a spiraling mount a mountain track in Europe. You'd see Verdant forestry in the background but the fact is that as our culture it seems in many ways declines we are forced in a deeper false idolatry that's really what's behind that is an attempt to get you to worship a vehicle via the icons of the culture there's no point worshipping a vehicle but yeah in a way it's like someone they're saying about a sexy girl in a car is it any different than when you used to see like an attractive woman draped over the hood of a vehicle is it any different from that just appealing to a different demographic how it'll be used i saw uh, elon musk's tweet like uh, do you sell cars <laughs> even <laughs> like you know and that's but like, like think about what coca-cola have always done coca-cola have tried to m connect their beverage with youth and joy or, or Christmas festivity when in fact it's just a sugary drink. That's really all it is. And in a sense, our challenge, I think, is to become discerning. So we're able to go, well, you know, Jaguar, it's just like a car, really. It can't make me feel better about myself. It can't fulfill this yearning within me. Indeed, even the theories of Sigmund Freud, other than a kind of excellent narrativization of the impacts of uh, family of origin experiences on your subsequent sexuality, are largely voided because of their inability to incorporate a spiritual component, Freud being broadly an atheist, and this distinction being what caused the uh, fissure and rift between him and Jung, who always believed there was some aspect to reality that couldn't be contained within Freud's limited, albeit brilliant and epochal analysis, that all problems arose as a result of our sexual inhibitions and sexual prohibition and sexual repression. What I will say is I was in Phoenix quite recently for a little bit and I saw them like, you know, in Phoenix, they've got those Jaguar cars that are self-driving automated vehicles. Like they look a bit like, you know, when you see a Google car driving around your town that's taking shots for maps, you know, and you think mm, you're giving that directly to the government. Of course we are. The government started the satellites in the first place, did a deal with Google, and now the information is going straight back to the government as well as it private information about all of your searches and every single data point we can derive from your online activity to turn you into a product also. <laughs> Made me feel that it's a dystopic organization. This is the fundamental question. Are Jaguar making a massive error? Let me know in the comments and chat, yes or no, why or in. A massive error in using these tropes and this tack when trying to advertise a product? Or are they trying to reach a market that they imagine are accessible to them in the post Trump world. Probably they had set up those adverts and that aesthetic some time ago, but they've gone ahead with it. And I, do you think they have not observed what the culture's doing? And look, oh no, shit, everything people are now saying, like making jokes about pronouns now, and while hopefully people are respectful of all people and all identities, a principle covered by kindness and love doesn't need its own little subset, maybe the people that are feeling aggrieved by Trump's victory, the people that are affiliated with wokeism, because it's the only aspect of the Democratic Party uh, campaigning ideology that has even a tangential value to it. The tangent being protect vulnerable people. That's, you know, that's in Christianity, it's in most theology, widows and orphans protect people. But some people will go like, perhaps my way of clinging on is to drive this Jaguar. After all, the people in the commercial were wearing outrageous clothes, you know? So there we go. Um, I, this is what I feel about it. It's just an interesting window into an, a culture in continual flux and an attempt to reach a market that might be grieving in the result of the, in the aftermath of the election. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments and chat. The war against free speech 
is in full swing. We are the vanguard, bravely fighting back. Rumble's the home of this channel, Stay Free, and a leader in defending the fundamental human right of free speech. They've joined X to sue a cartel of advertisers and ad agencies who conspired to block ad revenue from going to the platforms. Recently, they've launched Rumble Premium. This, I think, is going to be a game changer for all of us. It's an ad-free viewing experience with great perks for viewers and creators. Rumble Premium will give you the ability to dive into your favorite content on your mobile or desktop or smart TV and savor every uninterrupted second of my content. Why don't you upgrade to Rumble Premium today? Support my free speech and the free speech of other content creators on this platform. Please go to Rumble now, rumble.com forward slash premium. And if you use the code brand, you'll save $10 and Rumble will be aware that our stream is creating great converts. So that's rumble.com forward slash premium. And do use the code brand to save $10. Anyway, there's a link there at the bottom of the screen now. We're posting it in the chat. Join up. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.